Are you thinking about getting your next credit card when Navy Federal? And do you want to learn how to avoid getting denied? Well, if so, then you've clicked on the right video. If you're already subscribed, then welcome back. But if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Ish Sandiford, and you are now watching Just Money, where we talk about financial related topics such as personal and business credit, real estate, and other financial related topics. So if that's something you're into, then you're probably gonna want to consider subscribing. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about when to apply for your third or next credit card with Navy Federal. And I will also show you a free online tool that you can use to get pre-qualified for your next credit card only using a soft pool. Meaning it won't show up as an inquiry on your credit report, so stay tuned. And I'll also go over some tips on how to increase your internal points with Navy Federal so that way you can increase your chances of getting approved for a product with them. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, now let's start with some details that you should know about Navy Federal already. So Navy Federal only allows you to have three credit cards on your personal credit. They do, however, allow you to have additional credit cards on the authorized user side though. So basically you have three credit cards on your own and then you have more as an authorized user. And secured credit cards do not count as one of your three credit cards. So you can have three cards plus secured credit cards. But if you own a business then you can also get three additional credit cards on the business credit side. Navy Federal has a 91-3 rule meaning you can apply for your next credit card 91 days and or three billing statements from the day you got approved on your previous credit card from Navy Federal. And that's why it's called a 91-3 rule. And honestly the same rule applies if you're applying for your second credit card with Navy Federal or even your third card with Navy Federal. However, I do feel like this rule only applies if you don't have excellent credit, so let me explain. If you have bad to decent credit, then you're probably going to want to be a little bit more patient on how fast you start applying for credit cards with Navy Federal, especially if you're getting your first card with Navy Federal. Now, if you have excellent credit, then you can apply for your second or even your third credit card with Navy Federal a whole lot sooner than 91 days. Again, it really depends on your credit relationship that you have built with Navy Federal and what kind of history you have with them. And of course, your overall credit history as well. Okay, now let me give you some tips on some things you can do to help your chances of getting approved faster. Tip one, as mentioned before, wait 91 days before applying for your next credit card if you don't have excellent credit. You need to wait at least 91 days before applying or else you will get denied. And let me also mention that you should always plan ahead, meaning that you want to keep track of what your current credit score is and do things to increase your current credit score, such as paying off debt that you have on that credit card. Even paying an additional $20 on top of what your minimum payment is can help boost your credit score a little bit at least. Your chances on approval rely heavy on those factors. The fact that you're paying down your debt and that your score is increasing over time. Okay, now tip number two, using the pre-qualification tool on the app before applying. And this is gonna be a soft pull, not a hard pull inquiry, by the way. For those that don't know about this tool, the pre-qualification tool is found in the app under the credit cards tab. Then you click on the pre-qualify me button. Then you have to log back in and then you need to enter your income and you'll find out if you're pre-qualified or not. Tip number three, another thing that may help your chances is by putting yourself in a position to where you have a low utilization ratio, meaning not owing more than 30% on your overall credit limit. If you want a higher chance, then try to get your utilization utilization ratio under 10% if you can. But if not, then 30% is okay. But under 10% is better, of course. As I mentioned earlier, paying down your overall debt can help you increase your credit score. And I'll give you guys an example. I recently helped a client go from a 589 credit score all the way to a 723 credit score. And that was only done in 45 days by having him just pay off his debt, which brought his utilization ratio lower under 30%. I hope you guys understand what I mean. If you guys don't, then I'll give a more detailed example. So let's say you only have one credit card and your credit limit is $1,000 and you owe or keep a balance of $800 on there. What that means to lenders is that your utilization ratio is at 80%. And the math is a thousand times 80% is gonna be $800. So when I say keep your utilization ratio under 30%, then that means you shouldn't be spending more than $300 if you only have a credit limit of about $1,000 on that credit card. Because owing more than $300 on that $1,000 credit card drastically will drop your credit score. Now let's say you're close to being maxed out on your current credit card. What should you do in that situation if you can't afford to bring your debt down? Then you can use tip number four. Okay, now tip number four. A lot of people don't know about this hack, but here it is. Okay, if you have a high balance on your credit card, then I would recommend to apply for a credit limit increase versus getting a second or even third credit card. You should definitely apply for a credit limit increase instead. Because by getting a credit limit increase, that would then lower your credit utilization ratio. For example, if your credit limit is $1,000 and your balance is $500, then your credit utilization ratio is going to be at a 50%. Why is it going to be 50%? Because you're using 50% of your credit limit. So if you apply for a credit limit increase instead, and they give you, let's say, an additional $1,000, then that lowers your utilization ratio to under that 30% that you need to be at. And that's going to be where most credit card companies prefer that you stay under, under that 30%. If you're not under that 30%, then you're going to be considered something called a high risk. So here's the math. New limit of $2,000, and let's say you still owe that $500. So 30% of $2,000 is $600, which means your utilization would now be under that 30% that you need to be at. And also, here's another act. If you apply for a credit limit increase using the app, you will not get a hard pull on your credit report. What? 
Yeah, that's right. No hard pull on your credit report. And also, if you guys are finding any of this information valuable or helpful, if you guys could do me a favor and hit the like button down below, I would truly appreciate that because it really helps me out a lot. But anyways, now that you got a credit limit increase, what do you do next? Make sure that you do not use the funds in your credit limit increase that you just got. Do not do that. Wait until your new limit gets reported on your credit report. Then your credit score will go up and then you apply for your next credit card. You'll have better chances that way. It's a process. You have to plan ahead and be patient because patience is key. The whole point of this is to build a higher credit score while still establishing a relationship with Navy Federal. I hope you guys know what I mean. If you don't, then I'll give you guys some tips on how to do that. Here's tip number five. Building a relationship means building your internal data points with that financial institution. Navy Federal has their own internal score rating that they grade you on. And that's dependent on how you use those accounts. So here are some ways to build up that internal score. First, start by simply using your accounts, such as your checking account and your savings account. If you have a job that you get paid direct deposit, then I would definitely set that up immediately because having a direct deposit with Navy Federal is huge. That shows and proves literally that you have income coming in every week or however you get paid. And also deposit some money into your savings account because having anything in there is better than nothing. Remember, this is planning ahead and planning for your future. We have to think long term and be patient. I'll give you guys another example though. If you deposit $25 every week, just $25 into your savings account, then that's $100 a month. And then in three months, that'll be $300 in your savings account. And you can keep those $300 in your savings account and go get something called a secured savings loan, aka something called a pledge loan with Navy Federal for a six month term. And now you'll have an installment loan reporting on your credit report. And as little as six months, your credit score is going to go up from 80 to 100 points. Not to mention, you're also building your internal score with them at the same time. Also, if you guys are not subscribed, you're probably going to want to consider subscribing for more info. Okay, now that was a lot of information right there already. So let's just do a quick recap on what we talked about. One, if you have bad credit, wait 91 days to apply. Two, if you have excellent credit, then you can apply sooner, but everybody's case scenario is always different. Three, if you're unsure on what credit card to get, then use the pre-qualification tool that I mentioned early on in this video. And then that's going to show you all the credit cards that you might get approved for. Four, if you're maxed out on your credit limits, apply for a credit limit increase versus getting a new credit card. Five, use your checking and savings account to build an internal score with Navy Federal. Make small deposits on a regular basis before applying for your next card. Six, if you don't have installment loans on your credit, then get something called a secured savings loan, aka a pledge loan. I made a video not too long ago on what a pledge loan is and how it works and the hack that everybody does. So if you guys are interested in knowing more about that, then just click the link in the description below. It'll be the first link. Or just feel free to browse my channel. Seven, once you pay off your secured loan, apply for a bigger secured savings loan and just keep repeating the process. And eight, remember, this is not financial advice. So do your own due diligence before doing anything. These are things that I have done and it's worked for me personally. And now I have over 30,000 in credit limits just from my two platinum credit cards that I have with Navy Federal. And now I finally got approved for the Navy Federal flagship credit card as well, which I'll be talking about really, really soon. So if you guys want to know on how I got approved for the Navy Federal black flagship credit card that everybody wants, you're probably going to want to consider subscribing because I'm about to be talking about the Navy Federal black flagship credit card a lot soon. So stay tuned. And by the way, I also got approved for a car loan with Navy Federal. I also made a video on that. I'll link it down in the description below. It'll be the second link. And I also got approved for a 50,000 unsecured personal loan with Navy Federal. Again, if you guys want to know on how I did that, I'll link it down in the description below. That will be the third link. And I also got approved for a business checking account with them and the Go Biz credit card that they offer and plenty of other products. And I'm going to be doing videos on all of these topics so that way I can help you guys get there. So stay tuned. I also made a video on how I got over 100,000 just in credit card limits with Chase, Navy Federal, American Express, Capital One, etc. You name it. If you guys are interested in seeing that video, then I'll link it down in the description below. It'll be the fourth link. But I really hope that you guys learn from my credit journey and that it helps you out in some kind of way. And also, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I do read all comments and I'll try my best to get back to all of you. But also let me know in the comments, why are you trying to get your first or second or even third credit card with Navy Federal? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to get like a higher credit limit? Are you trying to lower your credit utilization ratio? Are you trying to build a higher internal score with them so that way you can get approved for a $50,000 card? know a $50,000 personal loan or whatever a mortgage let me know in the comments I would like to know and not only would I like to know I think all of us as a community would like to know so that way we can all help each other but if you guys made it to the end of the video then I do truly appreciate you guys we're at 16,446 subscribers at the time of this recording so I do appreciate all who watch I do post weekly videos for those that don't know and if you haven't already don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you guys get notified every time I ish post a new video and again 
again, we talk about personal and business credit, real estate, and other financial related topics. So if that's something you're into, then you're probably gonna wanna consider subscribing. We talk about credit cards such as Chase, Amex, Navy Federal, et cetera, how to get high limits on your credit cards, how to start business credit. We talk about some real estate, we talk about mortgage loan products. So if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely consider subscribing. And for those that don't know, I'm also a real estate agent, a realtor here in Southern California. So if you're looking to buy or sell or have any questions in regards to real estate, then all my information is in the description below. I am also a licensed mortgage loan originator as well. So so if you need funding for a home, then again, all my information is in the description below. I go by the name of Ish Sandiford, and I will see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.